the European League of Legends Championship Series. I'm your host, Efia Shok Zaportre, and we are coming to you live from the Zéret de Lille, France, for week six of the European LCS. Et pour les spectateurs français, bienvenue au Zénith pour la deuxième journée de League of Legends Championship Series Européenne en direct de Lille. It's day two of this very special weekend, and if yesterday wasn't fun enough, Seriously, we have seven, yes, seven more LCS games and the final of the Summer Promotion Qualifier in store for you. Both Meet Your Makers and Alternate have punched a ticket for the LCS Summer Promotion event, but there's still plenty on the line. Bragging rights, seating, and $30,000 up for grabs in the final today. That is coming up first on this stage. Okay, let's get to it. Starting on the blue side, led by Arane, this team suffered heartbreak with their results in Warsaw, but they have been incredibly impressive in their current run, taking out Mistral yesterday in an emotional three-game series that got the crowd on its feet. Today, they play to make a statement against favorite MYM. Please give it up for Team Alternate! <laughs> And starting as your red team, they have crushed through this tournament so far, taking down TCM yesterday 2-0. We all know their story. They were oh so close to qualifying in Warsaw, falling just short. They are incredibly motivated to succeed this time around. Please welcome, meet your makers! <laughs> Right, we've met the teams. We see they are ready to go. So now it's time to meet our commentators. For the French stream, nos commentateurs extraordinaires, Twix et Lege. And for the English stream, Christopher Panky Pankers and Steven Eisen. Take it away, guys. Thank you again, Sharks. We are back for finals day. And what a final it's going to be. Alternate meet your makers. These guys worked so hard to get here yesterday. Yeah, uh, yesterday was sort of the precursor. The moment these guys knew they were in this tournament, they prepared for this game. They knew they, these two have a history. They knew it's going to be a tough match for both teams. And the great thing is this crowd is changing everything. All the plays are building up such momentum and it's pulling them through the games. These teams, there's a lot on the line. There's $20,000 and there's really important seeding for the qualifier. Yeah, I mean, we spoke to the teams, as we mentioned last night and the night before the yesterday's brackets. Alton were very confident they were going to meet Meet Your Makers in this final before it even started. Yep. But Mistral nearly upset them. Yep. But take a quick look at the brackets just to remind you of how yesterday's games went. And uh, there you can see it in screen. Meet Your Makers, TCM game, and Shocks did mention 2-0. TCM had a very strong early game in both of those matches, yep. but unfortunately couldn't quite carry it through to the victory and Meet Your Makers shone out. TCM yes, had all champions had problems against them. The Thresh yep. really pulled Meet Your Makers through. Great ganks, great hooks. With the Maokai, you're combining it. TCM, they did, they did, they tried their hardest, but sadly, Mia Rikers, their experience just pulled them straight through that game. Yeah, and then Mr. Alton are there. They're going 2-1 to one in the series. Alton are picking up that first game in very convincing fashion, very heavily one-sided scoreline, but Mistral came back with a vengeance in game two. Alternate tried something a little bit funky, tried a very aggressive mid-game team strategy that unfortunately for them didn't really work out. Mistral picked their strat, they stuck to their guns, they played champions, they knew, and that Fizz play allowed them to take that second game. Great Fizz play, alternate suffered. Once someone on their team suffers, it seems the whole team suffers. Frelon went 0-3 on Katarina before picking up any kills. They had some problems with face checks that really hit the confidence of the team. Eventually, though, they went back to their roots. They did Twisted Fate, they did Shen. They did a really defensive composition. They're like, we just play champions we're good at. Don't take any huge risks and we'll get through this. And they did take it through in the third game. Exactly. So there are, as I said, the brackets. Let's remind ourselves of who's playing for which team. With alternate first, we'll have a look at that team sheet and see exactly who is on the fields of justice. Cup in that top lane with the trackball that we all saw yesterday. I still can't wrap my head around it. Yep. But Aranea in the jungle in that beanie hat. Pharrell and Lord, Metalex and Jerry are the round off for that lineup. 
I did talk to Ocelot about the trackball last yesterday, and he's like, I'd rather just not play. <laughs> if you give me a trackball, League of Legends, for a tournament, I'd just rather not play in the tournament. It's but an interesting up, way to yeah. look at it, but it's, it's what you're used to, and Cubs pulled off some impressive feats with sure. that thing, so he knows what it's he's doing. It's not a handicap for sure. Exactly. But they are playing the favourites for this tournament, and that is Meet Your Makers, the Polish powerhouse. Exactly, the these guys have yeah. been together as of 1st of March last year, a year now, so they have known each other inside out. There's, of course, brothers listed on this team. You can see there, Makla and Makati. Yep. But Kubon is their top laner. Makati is in their jungle. Charu, of course, in the mid lane. And then Makla, Limic, that bottom lane powerhouse. As this five, they have won about $40,000 in prize money already. They've been together forever. They've taken out, they took out EG at the, uh, recently. They've taken out huge teams. Speaking yeah. of recent results, I was going to say EG at CBIT, right. but more importantly, last week yep. in the solo mid EU uh, tournament, these guys met each other in two best of threes. They met each other twice. They met each other in the winners' final and the grand final. And overall, in both those games, MYM went 2 1. So in competitive play, MYM 5, alternate 2. Exactly, so it's looking very much in my favour, but as we mentioned, Alternate have promised us some interesting new strategies, but they wouldn't give me even the slightest hint. And I know the crowd here, yep. they want to see one certain champion. And here we go into Champion Select. They uh, want to see that Very team. quick bans coming out from these teams, look at that. The Thresh ban, very important. In the Solo Mate tournament yesterday, Thresh, if you got Thresh, you won the game. Uh, wow, Twisted Fate, they don't want to deal with both Twisted Fate and Shen, so a really nice pick up from MY on the Shen. Ultra Twisted Fate. MYM really love Twisted Fate Nocturne. They might go Nocturne Shen. They like the double gank that comes in with the Nocturne. Nocturne, you know, St. Vicious said Nocturne was the best jungler in Season 3, at the start of Season 3. He's the best lane ganker uh, from, from all the people, but he's definitely dropped off because when you're in that five and you hear the Nocturne, oh, everyone pulls back, everyone watches the AD carry, and Nocturne goes in so far. MYM love Jace. He's a big pickup for them. Yeah, and these bands, MYM of you, Diana, Vi, Oriana, all, again, very reminiscent of this T uh, TSM tournament. They used those uh, bands multiple times, I don't, don't want to count exactly, but every time they did, if I remember, they did manage to pull that game out of the bag. For in-laws, Diana, we saw it in their first couple of games yesterday, yep. terrifying up against Mistral once he started to get that snowball rolling, once he started to get the map control, roam around and just assassinate people, as Diana does so well. But these are some very quick picks from Alternate, and I love the Volley Bear pick up. Now, when Vo Alternate pick Volley Bear, they also like to pick Singe. They like this double flip sort of combination that comes out from them. With the Twisted Fate card initiate, you could see, I think you could see a Shinge. Now, MYM's bans have been the same as exactly every game they played. All the games they played against Alternate last week, they banned Diana by Oriana. They really are locking out for Ellen Lord. They want him on Katarina. They want him on Lux. Stuff he's, I mean, we saw his Katarina yesterday. They lost that game. He, he did pick up quite, a quadra kill on that. He, yeah, but it just didn't quite work. The same way, you know, he's not quite as dominating because we saw just how dominating his Diana was. Yeah, that was terrifying. We did see a couple of uh, Varus Lulu lanes yesterday yep. for a couple of different teams mixing it up. Very strong, good poke, good sustain. Uh, not so big, but um, good survivability is what I'm looking for with the shields, with the uh, wild growth from Lulu. This time, that Zyra could be support, could also still be in that mid lane. Right, uh, but I think MYM are saving their last pick for a Kale. Uh, they really like Kale. Singe coming in, and a Gragas. The crowd goes mad. Where's Gragas this, going? Uh, there's, a, there's a Gragas in the game, and there's a TF in the game, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, Gragas support, Volley Bear support. I've seen Gragas in the jungle. That Twisted is not unheard of. <laughs> Twisted Fate in the support role. Stop I don't want to. There's, there's lots of different options in that. Singe, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to have to say Singe is going to go solo. He's going to go in the top lane. He sure. needs that farm. Yep. Singe cannot be gimped in that situation. They love the double flip for these Volley guys. Volley Bear scales yeah. very well on health alone, so he could perhaps get away with sitting him down there in the support role right. and just building straight health items, a lot of Kindle gems, some good cooldown reduction, and he could benefit from that. Yeah, he just... It's, it's got to be Gragas, like, surely. No one else would pick it for him. He'd think they were trolling him. Uh, could be... Okay, there's Nocturne. They love the Nocturne jungle. They love it with the Shen. So Jace mid lane, Nocturne jungle, Zyra virus bot. They do like Zyra support. Virus, we don't see it that much from them. But MYM... Uh, they're definitely looking at the strong ganks right now. They, they've played a lot of Nocturne, and they're pretty much the only team that does. Like, in the competitive scene too much, how often do you see it? 
And Jamie's currently holding onto the TF. I'm just watching them twitch, but it could go It's got to be for Ellen Lord on TF. Oh, it's, it's still there. Of course, we have seen teams do last second switch. We'll see. But yeah. I want to talk again. MYM, this knockdown pick. Not many people have been playing him at the moment. You did right. mention St. Vicious said he was the strongest jungler start of season three. We've had a couple of changes, yep. item changes, playstyle changes. Yep. He started to fall out a little bit. But MYM played him in almost every group stage game yep. back at CBIT, back at the IEM World Championships there. They do like to stick in him. He is a confident go-to champ for them. And now they've got him in this roster with those other globals, with that other long-range, hard poke, strong initiate. Right. Alternate going to have to be on their toes from that moment he sits level six. It's a great initiate, you know. I was saying the five, you know, it doesn't work too well in five-man play because the, once you hear the Nocturnal, everyone on the team backs up and they cover the AD carry. But if Shen is ulting that Nocturne as well, all of a sudden you have two really tanky people on straight on the enemy AD carry, and there's not that much you can do about it. They love the Nocturne. Ch MYM really playing champions they know. Alternate are playing Gragas. There's a busy crowd. Well, it's not a business it's a stitch, but it looks more like a fist. Okay, yeah, with that. it does look like And this. yes, Jay Ree has stuck with the Twisted Fate, so it's Twisted Fate support. He does have some hard CC. I guess it kind of works with the Caitlyn. It's two kind of poke champions. He has mana regen from blue carding the minions, and they're probably just going to be shoving the wave. I think that's how this is going to work. They, um, we've got Frillin Lord with Teleport. He's yep. on blue side. Possibility. Caitlyn Twisted Fate go mid. Gregor takes blue buff, teleports down to bottom lane, 2v1s. Yep. And yep. then we have Caitlyn and, and Twisted Fate three. just hard shoving that mid lane into the turret over and over again, trying to shut down that and get that very early on. Right, now MYM know, know this possibility. Gragas 1v2 is definitely on... The, you know, he needs the blue bar if he wants to do that. We saw in North American LCS recently, for sure, the other team, when they expect that sort of Gragas Carthus, they invade the blue bar. They don't want him to get that blue bar. Yeah, so we'll see exactly how this level one shaped up. This is game number one between alternates and meet your makers for the seeding and the prize money here in the summer promotion qualifier in LCS Lille Road Trip. And it's also just bragging rights. These guys meet so yeah. much. They're, they're the highest quality amateur teams in Europe, so they're going to meet a lot, and they're both doing a very defensive level one here. You know, I was saying they want to take the blue buff away. I don't think they're expecting the 2v1. I mean, we have uh, we saw some very aggressive level one starts from a lot of the teams yesterday. We always had at least one team going into the other jungle, trying to take something away. I got my sides completely confused. Of course, Greg isn't going to take blue and go bottom. He's on blue side, not purple. Right. <laughs> Went completely backwards, but we'll see. As now that timer ticks through and the creeps start to spawn, which way they're going. So they are shaking things up completely. Zara going to head up, planting a ward, I suspect, around the corner. There we go. At Aranea's feet, but he's not going to have time to kill that anyway. He's going to watch that there. So we are going to see Limic and Makla. They're definitely going towards that bottom lane, where they should be. Charu going to stick with his chase in mid from the looks of things. It looks like they're going to take... See, I've seen a couple of interesting starts here. A couple of uh, jungle tweaks, a couple of changes that people have realized. You can do golems right. with your jungler, yep. then do red buff. Yep. Give the red buff to one of your solo lanes. Yep. And providing the jungler still shares experience, he will still hit level two, yep. still get his uh, abilities, and be able to clear the rest of his jungle. Then, of course, your solo laner, in this case, possibly Charu, could have that red buff and could be fine with it. But no, they were just sharing the golem experience and he's going to take that red himself. I mean, you have to, you can only do that on champions that are guaranteed to get auto attacks without putting themselves at too much risk. Uh, they do give it away to the volley bear and Gragas is backing. He's going to TP bot for the 1v2. Kerp has done that strategy again up in the top lane. He started with a pink ward and immediately kills Shen's ward. So he's now got that. Uh, that paranoia aspect involved in. He doesn't know what's coming up there, River. He's got to play it very careful, watch his timing, watch his spacings very well. But for Rinlord, immediately taken very low in this bottom lane. The Ignite has been burned by MYM. He's now going to have to play this very safe early on, start chugging through as many of those potions as he can. He's got six of them, so he should be okay for a while. But he's got to try and CS from a distance. Aaron Eric coming down straight through a ward. Should give him a little bit of safety as Makla and Libic back away. Yeah, this is the key to the 1v2. The jungler usually has to come and give him some help. You, see, you can see Gragas, he's preferring to poke instead of farm. He doesn't want them to have free harass on him, to, w to what extent he can. But I'm expecting to see this Zyra Barris do everything they can to punish. And wow, you can see that single target body slam on Barris doing so much damage. Yeah, we do see from another dash in towards Libic, misses that one. We do, of course, have that mid lane as we expected.
Jayri and uh, Metalex in there shoving that hard onto Charlie. Aaron here does find Makati around the corner, does get the fling on the slows going down, but the fear's going to come out from Makati now. Remember, Aaron here has his passive, so he's going to get a lot of health back from that. The QE combo misses from Jace, but then he leaps in, forces a flash away from Aaron here and pops that passive. Jerry and Medlex a little bit slow to react, and in all fairness, the bottom lane from MYM was almost there too, so that could have been disastrous for Alternate. Good disengage. It could have. It was a very vital EQ from Jace. It's such a shame it missed. Nocturne, he's kind of vulnerable to the invades because he can't run away very well. He has a spell shield, but Volley Bear would punish him if he had the numbers advantage. Sadly, it didn't quite work out for him, but you can tell they want to put pressure on this Nocturne. They don't want him to hit six quite as fast. Yeah, and we see Prelo going in again, getting quite aggressive onto Limbic, dodges the snare, but takes a little bit more damage. Macklin adding more auto attacks in turn, gets the slowdown, forces another body slam to safety. But Prelo, of course, every time he uses ability, he gets a percent of his health back. Just going to start drinking and getting that all back up again under turret, start throwing out some more barrels and uh, farming as they go. And where I'm starting to be a little bit more defensive down there too, of course they know Aaron Ayer was up towards the middle of the map and he could sneak down. There are patches in that river that aren't covered by their wards and Makla choosing to base. Uh, they did force the TP mid lane, they are just putting so much pressure on this lane. Twisted Fate, he doesn't even have any AP and wow, Nibic huge. going very low down here, Force the flash. For Lord, nice play, getting quite aggressive that body slam, taking some big creep damage here as well though, and actually that slowing vine picking it's on quite a bit. It's just amazing the amount of pressure this Gragas is able to put on a 1v2 lane. His body slam is doing immense damage. When it hits one target, that, that damage amplifies, and it's definitely paying off. I'm, I'm honestly quite surprised. See that. How's mid lane shaping up? We've got 36 CS on Kelly and 22 on Jace. 22 CS on both of the mid laners. I said it's great. We'll up some more, but they're staying very even despite these lane swaps. Flash forward from Charu. Going to get the knockback on Jayri. Actually he gets him out of the fear tether. He does have to flash away a little bit as well. This time the EQ lands, but Charu taking a lot of damage from Metalek. Need to try and pick a target because they're taking a lot of damage from this uh, alternate AD carry. Then we do choose the back right. Makati now goes back in. He's got the fear tether on. The barrier has been used by Metalex, but there's a stun car from Jay Reed. They're going to keep chasing on this, but with a nice speed boost from Charu and use of Nocturne's own Q. He's got I, more than enough moves speed to get out. I'm not really quite sure what happened there. They had a slight miscommunication. They were going for different targets, but ultimately they're blowing summoners. Caitlyn still does have her flash, though. Uh, considering Jace flashed over Caitlyn to knock her back, I'd say that worked out in alternate's favor. Definitely so. Jace didn't pop his red pot either, so he's got that little bit of a heal there and that little bit of damage boost when he needs it. Good EQ combo hits both Metalex and Jerry this time. Now another Q lands from Nocturne onto Metalex, so he's getting lower by the second. He's run out of health, but he hasn't had any health pushing. He's got a tool to attack to try and get that health back up. But Makati going to be close to six soon. He's got a couple of jungle creeps that he can use, and as a result, this mid lane from Alternate do decide to back away. I was saying at the start of the game how key the 1v2 is that the jungler comes along and helps him. But Ferellen Lord has been fine. Aranea has been counter jungling in the Nocturne. He's been helping so much in mid, which just shows how much faith they have in Ferellen Lord in this 1v2. He's been able to put so much pressure on. The MYM are kind of scared about going all in. Yeah, of course, diving in Gregor's Hunter Tower is not the greatest idea, especially as he's now level six. He's going to have that explosive cask to disrupt everything you so carefully plan. And he's got good sustain to stay down there. Do get wards placed all over that river there to make sure that MYM pairing is safe. Shen is six, so they're probably going to go all in on bot lane right now. Shen is six, and Frillo just went very, very low. You can see it on the left hand side of your screen. His health bar is minuscule. I'm really surprised they didn't die that considering Shen is six. Uh, they had the extra protection, but they didn't have sight of Volley Bear. Uh, TF, he's not quite six, so he wouldn't have been able to help out. He is a support TF, so he's not that powerful, but. Uh, they definitely, they want to put the pressure on and they got to make use of this channel. Yeah, friend Lord comes straight back in with his teleport, that was off cooldown. So he didn't miss too much at all. McCarthy back into his red, of course, nice on the timer, on the respawn, seven and a half minutes. Very close to when he first killed it and they've of course just seen Aaron Air in the bottom lane, so he knows he's more than safe to smite that very early. Why Look at this great warding in mid lane. Uh, Red has that completely covered. Leaving and two creeps up to make sure he can go straight in early onto his mid lane. Charu gets the ult from Chen just to help out. But there is first blood. It's on to Jace. And they're going to keep chasing on a meta leg. The red buff is there. They're going to go under tower. No, because the Shen ult was cancelled. But Aaron Aya has shown up. Gets the fling onto Charu. He's now slowed. There's a red buff. But they're going to try and do a lot of damage to meta leg. He does pick up one kill with the help of Oli Bear. Flashes away from Makati though. Makati's got no mana now. Aaron Aya is going to keep chasing it up. He's only level five though to six. is Nocturne. Is he going to go into this turret? The ult comes out from Kaylin. Flings him back but he's taking a lot of damage. Then he has to leave when his passive kicks in. 
Jace, he tried, he died trying to help his buddy there. He tried to knock Volley Bear away, but Volley Bear said, no, I want you instead. Flipped him into the Caitlyn. Caitlyn played that really aggressive because she still has flash. Paid off for alternate. Equal exchange, but alternate now have a crucial lead. Q-Bomb was very, very low at that point. Took a lot of damage, of course, when Sims cancelled that Telebomb. And honestly, not sure it was the greatest timing. Chari was not taking that much damage when that shield went out. He didn't really need it. And if Cubon took that much free damage at the risk of that shield, could have saved it, but it got into a safer position and then used it on Chari when he really needed it. Well, they, they really wanted the taunt more than anything else. They wanted the added CC rather than for such a defensive uh, situation. And MYM seems to be looking at Dragon. They have pinked it. There is no one from Alternate in the area. Now it's completely clear. Alternate seem to have no idea. They do actually ping onto it. They realize something's going on. The Storm, of course, leave that bottom lane. as Ferdinand is pushing it, but the Drake is dead long before they get there. Wall placed over the wall. Jay Reed just in time to see it die. They have to watch MYM regroup, switch it up. They did obviously grab that mid turret after the gank with Volibear and Metalex's Kaelin. So now they are going to switch their AD and Twisted Fate. I don't even want to call him True Support. The AD and Twisted Fate down towards the bottom lane, trying to take the second turret of the game. But good job by MYM. The fact that that turret is down with that Drake, they've evened the goal count up and kept this very close. Yeah, that was really good dragon from MYM. They they knew when the enemy team was backing and they took great advantage of that. Now the problem is they have to keep their towers if they want to do it. Parasol goes out, catches for Renalod, he gets snared up, doesn't manage to get out of that knock up, and in comes Jaru to help clean up the kill. Misses his EQ, but goes to chase on Jaru with the speed move anyway. Uh, still. Beautiful Zyro out there, picking up the Gragas just on the edge of the of the uh, of the radius of that ult. Jace came in, finished the job, and there wasn't anything Friendly could do about it. This is the problem. They're trying to push the towers. They took a death. Can they keep doing that? That's really going to hit their confidence. Yeah, he had to go very deep trying to zone those two out, and they made the best use of it they could. Charu teleporting down into the river, coming to join them with that fight. Cuban up on top lane, actually got quite a bit more health now than the Singe, because he's got a giant spell up on him. And as a result, Kerb got to stay a little bit safe. Yeah, I think Singe went for the chain vest because he wanted the tears. He could have gone for the giant spell, but it is, after all, pretty much an all AD team. Shen kind of does magic damage, but that doesn't really count. So I, I think he's fine with the chain vest. He doesn't have the health. But he's not that confident enough to go behind the enemy tower, and who would be, really? Uh, he doesn't really have the wards for it either. Nocturne, considering... He considered lane ganking top, I think, but it's just going to backing. It is a singed, after all. They would waste a lot on that. And uh, I think they feel his ult would be better used somewhere else. But here's the crucial thing. Shen and Nocturne's ults are up. Expect to see plays happening really soon. Yeah. Then he goes and plants a pink ward in that top river bush, but there's another one in try anyway, so he should be okay. Now heading down towards this river, and actual fact, there's a Gragas sneaking around behind me. Use that body slam over the Baron Wall to get around to this position. Aaron A now coming down the lane. The snare's already been used. Kerb's going to get taunted out by Cubon. Livia gets flung back in by Aaron A. Kerb's going very low, though. Flashes away under the turret. Does drop down to Cubon. Picking one target. Libic flashes away from that barrel. Very nicely done by him. Explosive card misses completely. Libic did get the shield from Cubon, and Cubon's going to get south anyway. Dodges another barrel very well. Libic does still eventually go down after tighting backwards and forwards. But Ferenlord and Alternate missed a lot of abilities there. They're going to go in the bottom lane. But Kati gets the fear onto Jay Reed. Macron's doing a lot of damage. Does use his ult at the last second. Picks up that kill. Could have honestly used that ult on Caitlyn instead. Perhaps picked up to double. No. Uh, left and right, things are going wrong for Alternate Attack. Gragas, that was a crucial explosive pass. It took them so long to kill the support. Shen uh, is uh, taunt fighting on. Charu. How long is this fight going to go on for? Charu is taking a lot of tower damage and then the bite from Arane dodges another EQ. And Charu decides that's time to leave. Arane does so much natural damage, but the problem was he actually ran out of mana. Gragas is doing a great number on the top tower. He might actually take it, which will be a great pickup for alternate, considering what's happened. And Singed is chasing down a Varus. Teleporting down into the bottom lane as they are chasing onto this Varus. That barrel goes out. It's not going to land again as Mako dodges around it. Does use his Bailswater Cutlass onto Kurt, but it's not enough. The fling goes out anyway. They're going to leave the kill for Metalex. Yeah, nice convergence. They used that teleport to great effect. Varus had nowhere to run to. Gragas, he just finished hitting on the top lane. They, did they didn't quite get it. Towers are quite even now. MYM have a solid lead. But uh, the question is, can they do anything while Nocturnes and Shen's ults are down? Right. Top turret very low. Bottom turret down to half health. And now Kerb is switching up to push that one. It's one turret apiece so far in this game. But Meet Your Makers do have that overall goal lead. And of course, they picked up that first Drake. 
We haven't really seen too much of an influential impact yet from 